welcome to a second edition of the Armor Bites podcast, brought to you by 850 Armor Works. And today, we have a very special guest coming to join us. Uh, his name is Larry. He is going to be telling us a little bit about the projects he's working on and what got him started in all this. So we'll cut to that in just a second. And, um, oh yeah, we got a new sponsor, James. Oh yeah, who's that? Well, other than 850 Armor Works, where you can go guess. get all of your Star Wars costumes that you need to have fun like we do. Go ahead and guess. Uh, Raid Shadow Legends. Yes, yes, yes. Raid is a returning sponsor. Not really. Uh, but, yeah, we always have Raid. But now we're sponsored by Grammarly. In case you need to uh, take your writing to the next level, you can consult with Grammarly. You can put this paragraph in right here, and then it'll give you suggestions. What, are we legitimately sponsored by Grammarly? Yeah, or no. you just oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm gonna run this <laughs> this parody sponsor thing uh, okay. as long all as right, I can right. until somebody actually picks us up. Okay, you know. But for now, we are solely sponsored by eight five zero armorworks dot com. And the chill filled the room. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that was a good uh, little intro. Plug- we will. We will. Just say. Yeah, we will. Put them up Money. on the site. Money. Golden shower. No, the, oh, that's the, no, the, the camera has the camera has no idea what you, you, you just wanna, held. You want to make it rain. <laughs> they have no idea what you just held up. All right, so we will show y'all something that Imperial we've, we've done chits. here recently. Um, while working all weekend, had a little spr- uh, spark of genius, stroke of brilliance. My brain got stroked, something of that nature. Uh, so we started making some credit chips. And we also have, let's see if it's actually it's, visible. It's barely visible, but we'll, later, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll splice in photos. We actually have here in the back, 850armorworks.com, and the things that we do around here, 3D printing, molding costumes, resin castings, props, armor, and blasters, 850armorworks at gmail.com, all that on the back of it. And we did a couple of them spray painted in copper and um Gold. gold, yeah, gold, gold. That, I know my colors. Golden shower. I know my co- I know my colors. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Silver, right? <laughs> so we did these, and um, we may put them available on the site. But as y'all are ordering stuff from us, we're going to toss a couple of these in. I know it's not a huge thing, and if you see us running around conventions, events, dinners, whatever, I'm keeping a stack of them in my pocket. So. They're nice little handouts. They're a wonderful little business card. And honestly, if you want something like this for your business, it's real easy for us to design and get these printed for you. We print 60 at a time in about five hours. The cost isn't too high. Um, they look really good. For us, this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, business card. Because, like, a business card I can throw away. You know, eh, I got the business card, throw it away. Well, you're handing me an Imperial credit shit. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And But I'm also hand- handing you a sample of our material and a sample of print quality. So it's like you can really look at this and go, wow, that's where the print lines. Like, there are none. Yep. So it's just a neat little thing that I threw in in between the other 500,000 things I was doing up here Saturday, running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Um, but more specifically today, we're actually here to talk about paint. All these wonderful cans releasing noxious fumes. That's why we're so happy today. <laughs> yeah. No, they're sealed up. They're good. But we are going to talk about the paint process. And well, that, they're acrylics. So uh, it's not a lot of fumes they, coming they, out of acrylics. They so do. Well, not want, all these. This is not acrylics. You, you want to open it up? Yeah. Well, you want a little whiff there, Charlie? No, I'm good. You sure? Not on that one. Yeah. Not in the clothes. Not on any there. of them. Heck yeah. no. No, the acrylics right. are fine. The acrylics are Oh, no. Toxic. They, they definitely. No, no, no. They stink. Yeah, that's automotive acrylic. It's, oh, okay. it's a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to take you all step by step of what we do. And you can replicate a lot of these things with your stuff. Like we have a essentially commercial paint booth. Yeah. You know, ventilation, respirators, all that stuff. Because by the time we break it down using spray paint cans, it's not really cost effective. Plus, you do get a better quality paint when you're using these. Um, now, the well, it's also the, the volume, you know. When you're doing painting here, you're painting multiple suits of armor, multiple helmets, things like that. Trying to do all that with a rattle can it would slow the process a and bit. make it 
yeah. uh, not feasible a bit. for for commercial use. Whereas somebody working at home, there's nothing wrong with using rattle cans to paint your oh, armor. No. You know, when you're doing it yourself with you're only painting a few pieces at a time because you're trying to make your paint job perfect and not get any runs and things like that. That's, you know, it's, it's a different process. So. And it's not like we can't not get runs with this <clears throat> because yeah, you really can. It, and then it's even more of a nightmare, but we just try to avoid that. But to take y'all on kind of like the step-by-step -step of what we do, the first thing I always put down, almost no matter what I'm painting, uh, it's Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. Yeah, I'll go the other way. So you got a little monitor up there. Uh, now, this kind of acts as a primer to your primer. Specifically, at least according to the can, it makes paint stick, makes paint flexible, and it's ready to paint in five minutes. I wait 15. Um, <clears throat> now, making paint stick is really the most important thing because we're dealing with not only plastic, but we're dealing with, like, resins and printed stuff. It acts as like a surface preparer and when we're painting that first layer on if you sand it in the area it like kind of brings it all back to life and makes it like kind of glossy again um i'm sure it has other little chemically things that it does too um about why it actually makes the paint stick but when you're dealing with resin especially resin can be hit or miss it can either be a wonderful thing to paint, or you could just end up with little fish eyes all over the place. And that, fish eyes are usually because of contaminants, or you didn't clean it properly, there's leftover mold release, it was dusty on the surface. There's like a whole list. Or it could have just been that the resin wasn't mixed properly. It could have been anything. You know, ratio yeah. was off slightly, and so you get, you know, chemical residue left in, right. the, in the plastic. Uh, then the next thing is the making paint flexible. Mm. Now when you're dealing with plastic, that's especially nice to have because we're flexing this stuff like constantly like, like why I, I don't want my paint to crack you know it's it's there i don't want it to crack um that helps like if you're doing rubber or foam blasters as well so again it's like a primer to your primer uh down in the link below you'll also see a our link tree and links to our amazon shopping and affiliates so we'll have the uh spray can version in there it's i don't quote me on this at least right now it's probably about 25 dollars for a tall boy paint can uh but it's worth it one tall boy should get you like through an entire set of armor Easily. maybe yeah three four helmets we buy it either by the gallon or in these um quarts um well, quarts we, are a little we cheaper do oh i lp spray yeah. so yeah. we buy it like this instead of you spray can whiff. style no i'm good thank whiff. you okay <laughs> trying to cut it down <laughs> now <clears throat> second step to painting is primer i don't care what you're painting i don't care if you're painting your car i don't care if you're painting your walls at home uh, i don't care if you're painting a, a, a model yeah you paint your dog <laughs> prime your dog okay don't disclaimer don't, don't prime your, your dog you, you can actually just use paint plus primer on well, your dog cats are okay you can paint the cats. Uh, yeah. Nobody likes cats. Birds. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. But prime everything. So primer has multiple reasons why we use primer. The number one reason is so you make paint stick. Yeah. Yeah. But my number one reason for using primers is to have a uniform top coat. It's so like I can't stand Krylon Paint Plus Primer, Rust-Oleum Paint, any of these Paint Plus Primer paints. I can't stand them. Like, I still use a primer on it, and that's only because I want a single uniform color between plastic parts, resin parts, printed parts. Yeah. Anything I paint, a primer will help you achieve that. Um, now, specifically, we use high-build primers. This is, um, yeah, it's fast-build urethane primer. We use a few different types sometimes. Bring, bring it back a little yeah. bit. The, I was to say just the lighting, the where it was yeah. sitting, yeah, and the lighting up there. So, and this is a two-part primer. And this stuff mixes four to one because, again, we use HVLP paint systems. Um, and so it's a chemical cure primer, not like a primer that comes out of a can. So it kind of forms a hard shell surface. The other nice thing about this primer is it fills in small gaps and it's extremely well sandable. Like you can sand the top of it 
and you're still not going to get back through down to your bare material. Well, it's it's not just that it fills in small gaps. It hides small imperfections. There you go. Is what it is. There you go. If you've got a slight texturing on the the pull of plastic that your armor, your, you know, that particular sheet had a little bit, a little tiny bit of orange peel, some high build primer, you put down a layer of high build primer and then you give it a quick sanding and it's going to sand down those high areas, leave it in the low areas, and it's going to make that, that little area of orange peel completely disappear. That's very much true. And as a bonus, if you're doing um, like PLA printed parts, FDM printed stuff, Give it a good sand first, and then put this stuff on top of it, and you can you can kiss filler primer goodbye. Yeah, make make yeah, those it's print like lines one disappear. Coat that it's we've been doing that for a few years, and I'll, I'll never use a can of filler primer again. Um, I, I see it posted all the time. Just got in my case of filler primer, like uh, yeah. <laughs> like nah, I just bought a can. So the next step is going to be base coat. This is your actual color. So if you're painting it black, white, uh, short trooper tan, um, you know, a good base coat is what's going to be your primary color. Again, we use automotive products, <clears throat> and this is Shopline by PPG Base Coat. It actually makes it 50-50 with a reducer. Reducer comes in slow, medium, and fast. That has to do with how it atomizes. If, if you're spraying it out of yeah, HBLP. If you're spraying if... it there. Now, you can get, like, the little uh, pop -it cans and make your own spray paint. Um, I can't remember what they're called right now. They have like a little aerosol thing and you fill it up and then it'll work like regular spray paint. Yep. It's a little expensive at that point, but it'll work. But if somebody's just building one suit of armor at home, it's worth it to go ahead and buy, or if they're, even if they're building multiple suits, but if they're not doing it in, you know, high volume. Right. If somebody, you know, does, you know, they go to every convention and they're constantly winning costume contests and stuff. They can invest in an HVLP system. Exactly. But and um, I, mean, I brought this one specifically out because it is our short trooper tan. And I, like James just said, if you're at home, you can get the Montana gold uh, Sahara beige. Yep. And, you know, you can pay 15, 16 bucks a can for that stuff. We do too much volume. So this is a color match to that. And... Um, it, it's still not cheap by any means. It's better than paying fifteen yeah, bucks it's a rattle can. A lot. I I don't know how many rattle when cans. When you're it having takes. to coat an entire suit of armor yeah. for any of the short troopers, I, I'll be cussing up a storm every time a can goes dead, and I still have more to go, or yeah. I have to crack a can. I have, I get mad whenever I have to mix up more paint because I run out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get mad about everything. No, let's just clear that. Yeah, up. you get mad. Yeah, about I just everything. get mad about everything. Oh, the sun came up today. That's oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> We, we laugh, but he really does. I, I does. do, but yeah, I'm, <laughs> whatever. I'm, st I'm still fun to be around, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. You're like That's... a mushroom fun guy to be with. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Oh, dad jokes for days, wow. folks. Dad jokes for days. That's terrible. Oh, you, I, you know, I have been toting that joke around for decades, waiting for That's an a, opportunity really? to use it like Really? You've been that. holding that one in your back pocket, and you decide to throw it out right now. It's just one that I've heard for years. You've always heard oh, people say man. that, and and it's never done in the right you know, the right moment, the right context, mm. but that was perfect context. Well, that, I think that was that was the peak of my dad jokiness. I'll never get as good as that one was there. That hits me right there. <laughs> I live. <laughs> All right, so now Back that we're through base coat. Now, topic. if I were just doing, like, let's say a clone or um, something that doesn't need to be shiny, you know, clones, shore troopers, uh, tank drivers, whatever, we can stop at base coat. I could clear coat on top of it if I wanted to, um, but base coat, it's really thick, and it dries really fast. But if I want it to be shiny, that's when we move over into – oh, I had to bring full cans – <clears throat> single stage four to one acrylic yes that's the other part yeah. so kind of like the primer it mixes four to one you don't have to thin it with anything it's already pretty thin but this is what makes your stuff shiny now if you, you, you could cheat and just do clear coat right on top of base coat that's fine but i'm a real big fan of these single stage paints because they give you that sheen and feel and look without having to deal with a clear coat. Yeah, I mean, you know, as an example, 
yeah, there, there's look a at, nice little example. Look at example. that finish in there. That's you know. one thing I painted Saturday when I was up here, uh, running around doing everything and making these. and mirror finish. It doesn't get rid of any detail, you know. I mean, look at, you know, fingerprints visible. On oh, there, yeah, it's so. got fingerprints all over it. I was probably eating a bag of chips before I touched it earlier. I'm just, as yeah. an example of what that, that uh, stuff can do, and, you know. And when you lay that on, it's like one coat. That's all I have to do. So, well, actually, I kind of come through with the HVLP, and I, I do a tack coat, you know, kind of lightly spray it across there and let it tacky up, and then come behind it and do that wet coat, and that wet coat gives it that super beautiful, awesome look. Um, now, if I really wanted to shine you on, ha, 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 uh, yeah, we could clear coat <laughs> on top of that for yep. extra shine and extra protection, but I'm don't really see a reason to they paint cars like this yeah. you know the whole point of i mean single stage you know technically speaking for something like a death trooper specifically you could prime your armor with just black primer out of a can and then hit it with a couple of coats of of a gloss sealant and have a, a pretty decent yeah, looking you can you know you can it's a lot more effort though because you're you're going to be talking about at least one coat of black Two, if you don't want to get runs, talking about spraying out of a oh, rattle yeah. can. You know, probably two coats for your black, and then I would say two to three good coats of a, a gloss that are going to build up. Yeah, you but know. I get that in one coat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But not everybody has an no, HVLP gun. Not everybody does. House. And, and then so. your other contrary to that, and I've seen it happen a lot. Oh, shoot, it's happened to me before. Um, you, using rattle cans, it can get cloudy. Yeah. Like, you can have it going beautifully, and you're like, oh, great, I'm just going to do one more coat, and it's cloudy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or you didn't let your mid-coat tack for long enough, right. and you go to spray on your third coat, and you end up with a run. Or it. spider webs. Or, yeah, spider webbing. Uh, you know, humidity's too high that day. Humidity's too low that day. Temperature's too high that day. Temperature's too low that day. Yeah, rattle cans are, are convenient for home use, but there is so much extra crap that you have to take into consideration when you're spraying them. And, so. you know, you can always just go to our sponsor, A50ArmorWorks.com, and send your armor in for us to paint. You can. You sure can. Well, that about wraps up our painting seg segment. If y'all have any questions, comments, tips, or want to know anything else about this, be sure to post it below, ask us, and it's an email. Put it on your action item list to get it over to us, and we'll be here for you. Or just anything else we're interested in. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we're interested in stuff. Meat. Yeah. Oh, meat. Yeah. Beard care. Beard care. Yeah. It's getting longer again. <laughs> <laughs> It's not quite time for my tri-weekly shave. <laughs> you don't shave three times a week. <laughs> okay, wait. What would be my two-thirds monthly shave? There you go. There we go. <laughs> so so close. So now let's go ahead and welcome on our uh, first special guest today, Larry. All right, welcome back to Armor Bites. Today we're joined by one of our guests, Larry. And Larry's going to tell us a little bit about himself, what got him into costuming, and what project he's here. He actually just dropped by to pick up a few clone parts for his new thing. So, Larry, why don't you go ahead and tell us what that is? Well, the newest one is the... Get the uh, microphone. Get the <laughs> microphone, Larry. The you newest one is the Old Man Captain there. Rex. <laughs> All right, Which look at this guy. going to be a realistic... Look at this guy. Old Man Captain yeah. Rex. Yeah, if there was a better Old Man Rex candidate out there. The only live-action <laughs> Old Man Rex candidate that would be better than this is going to be Old Man Tamira Morrison himself. That's it. Yeah. Like, you're going to, yeah. from cartoon to real life, this dude. <laughs> Except his eye color's off. But yeah, that's yeah. the only thing that throws it off. Yeah, he has blue eyes. Such beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to put in contacts. Sorry. <laughs> oh, anyway, sorry to burst your bubble there. Oh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so you're working on a Clone Rex. Yes. Old Man Captain Clone Rex. Old Rex. It'll be Old Man Rex, and then it'll be a realistic. All righty rather do a realistic instead of taking an animated and putting it into real life because it's the cartoonish it style makes no yeah. sense because the armor doesn't match right preach preach <laughs> just huge pet peeve oh yeah huge i mean don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with you doing a cartoon style costume if that's what you're going for but we're old school we like it more realistic so 
Yeah. Just, it looks silly. Anyway, announcing a new product. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will be doing the animated armor eventually. No, I will not personally wear it. Yeah. Sorry. Just not my thing. So, anyway, well, let's just totally confuse you now. So, Larry, um, what got you into doing this costume thing? Actually, first, how long have you been doing the costume thing? Uh, first started about 25 years ago. Whoa! <laughs> doing what? It was a uh, Boba Fett. Okay. It was the first one that I did. And that was out of EVA foam, and that just... EVA foam is good to work with every once in a while, but it's just better to use ABS or anything like that. Harder, harder shell. So you've been playing for a long time. You're you're about as hardcore of a veteran as we are. Yep. Cool. More so than me. Yeah. I mean, it, it, 25 years ago that put you in the in the, the hobby. What late 90s? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't get in till early 2000s. So older than me. You were. I've been playing this game since that, mid 90s, yeah. mid to late 90s. So y'all are both in the one same way or bracket. the other. Yeah. Yeah, long time right. to be costuming. I mean, most people would have burned out in a hobby by now, but... Nah. Now, what got you into it, like, as of now, hanging out with us and the squad and 500 first and... I did about uh, four years I had applied to get in, and they had to keep changing the outfit over and over and over again. And then I ended with the Tuscan, and then I finally got in with it. And that was two years ago. You've been trying for four years? Yes. After yeah. having been costuming for 20 years. Yeah. Every like, time I turned around, it was like, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. you got to change it. you got to change it. Yeah, that's just, that's <laughs> asinine at this point. Like, no. Well, what like, what, what were they critiquing so much that... The paint color, paint scheme. For what in particular? Um, like, a, an actual Rex. I did the... Um, clone version of the Rex, which was phase two, and the paint schemes were completely wrong. Plus, it was EVA foam. So yeah, the EVA foam, yeah, that's that's a bit of a thing. So I mean, it, I it's did, great for cons. It's I great to build on with. the uh, Tuscan, and that's how I got in. Well, Tuscan. we're definitely glad to have you. You've been a fun little addition since we've met you, and I, I wish you would have got to known four years ago. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've sure? been a cool dude. <laughs> I, I, I'm wondering, like, where were you at when the Legion was, you know, getting its its first baby steps back in the late roots. 90s and the early 2000s? You know, I mean, if you were already doing, you know, Boba Fett costumes and stuff like that, like, had you heard of the, the Legion or? Oh, yeah. I heard them when they first started out. So what kept you? You just wanted to do your own thing? I just and, wanted to do my own thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could see that. So what is your, like, dream costume? Dream project? Old man, okay, let's fulfill that dream. <laughs> did, did you happen to bring your parts in here with you, or they're outside? They're outside. Oh, didn't bring. Um, yeah, grab them real quick. Let's let's like show them off and. Whatever. Oh, are, are you recording? Forearms. Are you recording? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yay! The best forearms ever. Oh yeah. Amazing. Hold, hold, hold them up. Hold them up because right now you're blocked oh. by the. <laughs> 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 but without the seams on them, they're a lot better, a lot smoother. Yeah, the seamless is, it is a good design. Oh, yeah. So. Nice. All right. Not everybody can do those, though. As, as you and I were laughing about earlier, uh, some people. No, just, I can get it in. I can get it in. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just it doesn't off. work for some people. <laughs> Well, they just increase yeah, the he just size a little bit. He just slides it right on. No big deal. All a right. A bit of foam lining in there. Yeah, that'll, that'll do well. So, and those were printed by 850 Armor Works on our Elegoo Jupiter printers, and we can custom size those and make those any way you want. And I'm going with the realistic shins. Do a little tiny bit of weathering on them. Not too much. Yeah, just a good wash. No, he's old man need. Rex. He needs a lot of weathering. Nah. I'm just saying. They've gone crazy with some of the weathering on him. With the, the blaster scoring. They've just gone insane because of cartoon ones. Yeah. Just blaster scoring all over the chest. 
all the way down all the armor. And, and yet, a stormtrooper barely gets glanced on the armor and he dies. But yeah. Captain Rex yeah. is like, I'm wearing full Beskar. <laughs> Just okay. bounces off. He's got that plot armor going for him right there. <laughs> all right, Larry. Well, thank you for coming on and being our first guest. And we'll see you again soon. All right. And, uh, yeah, we'll get some pictures with you next weekend when we're at Megacon. Will do. All right. Now get out of here. <laughs> I mean, you laugh about, you know, stage fright just by a helmet, but that's, you oh, know, when, when Jess was getting into the, the 501st, my wife, when she was getting into the 501st, she was really nervous about being in a costume and people judging her and stuff. But when she puts on the helmet, she gets that layer of anonymity and she just feels so much better about being in costume. Yep. Oh, make it random sound effects. Yep, there we go. <laughs> now, now, now you can understand me. <laughs> and you weren't recording any of that. I was. Oh, good. But yeah, Lisa has the same issue too. She doesn't want to do face characters. I mean, you look at yeah. that woman, and I, I, I go, she looks so much like Gina Carano, like such a resemblance. Like we need to do a Cara Dune. Like I don't want to show my face. Like oh. Yeah. Well, that's why Jess, you know, the, one of the first costumes we tried with her that first Halloween or whatever it was, was the Jen Erso ground crew. And she was uh, uncomfortable having her face exposed. But being able to go with a costume that, you know, wears a helmet, you know, it's like the way she describes it is when you put the helmet on, it removes all that fear and you kind of become that character. Yep. And, you know, she gets a confidence in her armor, she does things that she wouldn't dream of doing if her face was exposed. Yep, you, so. you have to remember, you're not you anymore. Yeah. You know, you get, to, you get to embody this character, whether it's actually like cosplay or not. You know, and you don't have to stay in character the whole time. You know, I mean, you could be a friendly stormtrooper, even though you shouldn't be. Uh, well, but, I mean, there's also, you know, it's situationally, I know that our at the time squad leader didn't like it but we did a troop up at the children's hospital that one year and i kept taking my helmet off because some of those kids were visibly becoming frightened at all these stormtroopers stepping into their hospital room and it was like okay, yeah we you need to pull show it off them i'm human there's people under here you know we're we're just we're here to help you feel better and some of those kids it made a big difference right he's like oh, it's not scary space robot guy here to abduct me yeah exactly yeah we're trying to bring some brightness and joy to the kids yeah. not scare them into submission so yeah you know it's putting the helmet on yeah you you there's nothing wrong with okay i'm a stormtrooper now act like a stormtrooper but there's also a time to turn that off sure so. yeah well Thank you, uh, Larry, for being here today. And anybody else that wants to be on, don't worry. You'll have your chance. We have a whole list of people. It's just a matter of as we get to you. As we only do this once a week, and, um, yeah, there's we're working. Well, he's not. He's retired. I'm, not. I'm working. <laughs> I get to take an hour out of my day and entertain everybody else. All right. I can't stop playing with the little credit chips. I, I showed know. them to Jess at the house, and she was like, kind of blown away the same thing like we were she was like oh my god how did people not think of this sooner yeah. and she was like I, she was looking at the text on the back and she was like is he going to use these as like business cards or i was like I, that's like the idea yeah you know give them away at conventions yeah, so, so i like see that. up at a convention and, I, and go here have <laughs> some right. money have, have a stack yeah. of credits <laughs> have some credits pass them out to your friends don't hoard them <clears throat> money so uh right now there are only three limited edition gold ones and three yeah. limited edition copper ones well but there's like a whole you, bunch of great ones yeah too. until you print and paint some more yeah well, <sighs> maybe maybe these would just be like chase cards and I, i'm gonna have to number them i think you're that's getting yeah it excessive. is it probably is because then every individual file would have to be numbered <laughs> and prepped for print instead of being able to just copy and paste. Mm, there may be, well, I could just take the Dremel out and, you know, serialize it. Yeah. <laughs> print them off, but then have like a, an actual <laughs> legitimate serializing machine to be yeah. able to stamp an, an original serial number into each one. <laughs> 
Yeah, I just, uh, they're super cool. I just can't quit like messing around with them. I think oh, they're, they're fun. <laughs> yeah, they're fun. It's like printing your own money. Not really. I mean, it's money for a fictional it's, universe yeah, for a that fictional doesn't universe. exist in, you know, yeah. in real, real life. With a government that doesn't exist that would be tyrannical if it did exist. I, I, I will tell you the one thing that I don't like about making these is they're supported on one side on the printer, kind of yeah. like this at an angle. So after they go through their wash cycle and I'm like sitting at the sink between two stra- strainers, like pick up one, break it off, throw it away, in there. Pick it up, break it off, throw it away. Well, the ones that doing that, that 120 me, times. <laughs> the ones that you gave me, I took them to the house. I just took like a nail file, set it on a oh, table. Yeah. And a, a few of them are going to have some minor screws file. on it, but for just getting the main supports off. Yeah, but it, it came off very it's super easy. Oh yeah, that's the beauty of resin and resin printing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, as far as material sample goes, too, these are in our ABS-like resin, so it takes a lot. I'm like really straining here. It's kind of painful. I mean, we could get a pair of pliers and snap I, it in half with yeah, some pliers. I, I, I know they it's, will I mean, break. it's plastic. For anybody I that doesn't know is. how, you know, 3D resin printing works, it's... Magic. No, it's not magic. It's it's It literally turns it into a hard plastic. It's, it's the same as if it were injection molded. It's just done with a different plastic that reacts, you know, turns from liquid to solid. So, uh, yeah, with UV light. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it's really fun to get that splashed up on your skin Ooh. and then walk out in, in the sun. Ooh. You find out pretty fast. It burns us! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Precious! <laughs> wrong, wrong fan. Oh, all right. So join us next week. <laughs> That's right. Welcome back to Lord of the Rings chat. I mean, uh, Armor Bites. <laughs> Well, I mean, since you're talking about Lord of the Rings, it's like, yeah, it's, that is one thing I'll, I'll do in the shop is, like, sit down, watch YouTube videos, movies. I, I did a whole armor run one day uh, watching Return of the King. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, that's how I, I knew how long I was working on that machine that ev- day. Everybody complains about the extended edition Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's all I like to watch. Yeah, until you have that much time that you, you've got to have something to occupy your mind while you're doing it, the work out there in the shop. Those 12 hours of, of, you know, extended editions, they come in handy. I've watched the extended edition so many times. I watch a regular edition now and go like, wait, it's missing a scene. Yeah, wait, where did that piece go? Huh? Huh? What happened here? Because there is no better edition than the extended edition unless it comes to Star Wars when the VHS tapes are the best edition. The original VHS tapes, not the remastered VHS tapes. No special editions. Correct. McClunky. (laughs) McClunky. (laughs) <laughs> it's like where did this come from did, did we need that and, and know, what does mcclunky translate to well, i should have done that for trivia no that's, that should, that should have been for trivia, trivia. Yeah. yeah 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 what was so McClunky anybody mean? watching what does mcclunky yeah. don't go search it on google just if you happen to know what it means let us know in in the chat down below is it hot teas i is it rhodesian i, I don't or know rhodian rhodesia is a Ro- rhodesian rhodian yeah close enough <laughs> You just totally insulted an entire country by calling them a bunch of green bug-eyed frogs that can't shoot straight or shoot uh, first. I mean, it's no Han worse than first. Han's head sliding oh. sideways on his shoulders by half a foot, you know. <laughs> oh, just – well, we didn't want to paint him as a cold character. He's a smuggler pirate dude. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. We know who he is. That he's was, a scoundrel. Yeah, that was part of the attraction of the character was that, yeah, he's a scoundrel. Right. So. Sir, he shot first. He got himself out of the situation. Han shot first. You heard it here. <laughs> Probably for the five billionth time, but you heard it here. That's right. He there's, shot there's a good first. clip for, uh, you know, Instagram or whatever. Uh, Since we're going to be old men right now. I am already an old man. <laughs> Look at my gray beard. You kids, get off my lawn. I know. It's just like, oh, it's all gray. It's gray. Dude, oh. I, was, I was looking at my beard the other day in the mirror, and it's like I have, I have like three little like traces where there's still like just a hint of color, and the rest of it's gray. Congratulations. It like, oh Your body God. has hit the point where it no longer has time to produce color for your hair. It just doesn't, my body doesn't your body give a body said fuck no anymore. more, no more. <laughs> so I will give you a little bit of trivia. Did you know that people today, the time difference is the same as people today talking about the 90s, as people in the 90s talking about the 60s? Yes. That just, that makes me feel really dated. Yeah. Because I'm still like, I, I have 1998 a lot of- was like two weeks ago. 
I have a lot of sympathy for when my dad was talking about in the 60s and I was just rolling my eyes as yeah. a teenager thinking like, okay, old man. Yeah, back in my day when we were listening to Stone Temple Pilots, like, <laughs> and in the 90s, he'd be like, yeah, back in my day when we listened to good music like Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin, yeah. like, I'd still or listen to all of that. The, the, the concept of MTV when we were young, when we were oh, teenagers... Yeah. Versus what teenagers today have as MTV, just completely, d and trying to explain to them, and they're just like, whatever, you old fart, go away. <laughs> Act your age and die, old man. And MTV used to have music videos. Now it's just like a whole bunch of shows, and maybe they have an hour yeah. of music videos. And then they, they, don't, they don't even they do don't any do that. music videos anymore. Really? None? No, none. So is that like all on, what, Vivo or something? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. You, like streaming services and yeah. things like that. But music television, MTV today, no longer has. They should just rebrand the it, network. It's nothing but it's it's uh you know real world TV and and uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. I don't know when the last time I actually watched a music video was. Probably when watching Beavis and Butthead. I see a lot on YouTube. Like I I have playlists on YouTube where I I just get a music mood yeah. and I'll I'll pull up playlists so. and usually it's the the music video. So. You know, yeah, usually, I, I, so. I don't pay that yeah. much attention to it. It's while I'm doing something else on the computer, but you know, the, there on my second monitor, the the music video is playing, and if it's interesting, I'll watch it. So. All right. So back on some topics. Yeah, back on yeah. topic. We had our old man rant. Old man rant. <laughs> God. Uh, oh, we, we were talking about coatings and stuff earlier. Uh, it, I mean. I don't know if you're going to do any photos of this one up on the website yeah, or anything. Yeah, this, this but one's going to get photographed. It's the first one is able to finish. This this is another thing that came off the uh, wonderful resin printers. Um, well, what I was going to point out was, you know, you had s the the barrel was sectioned in order to be printed, and with the the right coatings and preparation, it's completely invisible now. Like you you can't see it at all. Right. Yeah, we had. Like a I had to look inside I had a the barrel. running this way. There was a seam running this way, and yeah, yeah that, that should have been it. <clears throat> oh, there's a seam down here on the stock. The folding stock yeah, area. Yeah, the folding yeah. stock area right there. So, yeah, the right coatings, the right paints can absolutely, you know, a an ounce of paint will hide a, a mountain of sins when it when you're building your armor or your props or whatever. Sure. So. Yeah, and yeah, this is one. Um, last week when we were shooting the podcast, it was in pieces, and... I got in, and sometimes I try to do something for myself at least once a day, or at least once a week. Uh, but that was it. That was my goal. I started seeing it in pieces. Like I, okay, you printed it, finish it. Yeah. There's so many things that are unfinished out there. <laughs> it's just, I'll get to it one day. It's like, no, I need this. We're, we're going to Megacon next week. I'm wearing my Death Trooper that I just finished, and here it is. I, I got an MG34, DLT, 19X, whatever you want to call it. But I, I wanted this one. So, yeah, we'll make it available as well. Is it's this real. one not up on the, the sh mm -mm. shop yet? Oh, we used to make them years ago. We shop. used to print them on, mm. uh, out of PLA and finish them and ship out kits. It just got to be too much to keep up with at the yeah, time. Yeah, well, finishing the PLA is a very oh, – it used to be a very labor. It still is. Before it we really discovered is. things like some yeah, of the Yeah, the 2K primer primers. does, but on a blaster mm -hmm. still, man. Yeah. I, it's like I don't have time to sit there and finish that. Well, there's so many surfaces that have to be sanded individually. You've got to get down in there with a little piece yep. of folded up sandpaper and sand all the little compound curves and – on a blaster it's it's a nightmare yep so but coming off of the resin printers they really do i mean it's it's a world of difference yeah the most that's left on here is a little bit of the pixelation and i could have taken that off if yeah I wanted you could have just well you could have just increased the polygon count on um, the models, a little different that one specifically i'd have to send over to uh, blender and do sublimate surface and it's still not going to get rid of everything mm -hmm. actually that one may have been sublimated because these files are like six seven years old at this oh, point okay. yeah they're pretty old i've had them forever i mean either way yeah just a touch of sanding on some of the yeah. bigger flat surfaces that's really the only you don't even really see it on the barrel there on the, on i the may have sanded there. that area the barrel is i guarantee has been sanded a little bit but like this this locking ring and the uh stock yeah uh joint there it's like but really look at the knurling yeah you know? but you know knurling yeah, turns out nice detail. on fdm too and, yeah. and once you start getting into patterns and things when you're printing, then 
that that always makes things look nice and yeah. pretty. Now these aren't printed; those are actually aluminum. Yeah, I don't trust that. This no, is aluminum. I, I wouldn't trust. You yeah, know, I, even I'm even not with that. this resin is pretty strong, but I I wouldn't trust. I, that. It is. It I mean, it broken. could still potentially break if you drop it. But about the only thing that's not going to break if you drop it's going to be rubber. Yeah. And it is very possible to do something like this from rubber. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. It's just it would we, be a lot heavier, though. A li- yeah, probably twice the weight, give or take. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's that's just more of a time issue because I can legitimately make this mold pretty easily. There would be a few parts that were separate, but like from the grip, the stock, you know, all the barrel, all that would be foam rubber and then the rest of it would be separately cast that's going to go into our mold making video which is probably several several episodes away oh you actually have plans i thought we were just completely winging this thing yeah we are no no it's just every week is just going to be whatever like this week's paint yeah i just got through painting let's talk about paint sure i got some pictures let's just put them up there that's and paint. the mic that i know yeah <laughs> i i, I I mean, I guess it makes sense that you would need to plan ahead, but I, I had no idea that you would even plan. I mean, it makes sense, you know. It's, it's. Well, a, you got to think of an interesting topic, and at some point, we're going to run out of topics, or yeah. topics are going to overlap with each other, or we're just going to totally rely on special guests coming in and beat them over the head with what we're talking about, we and need, then we go that on to means like. We need to go make friends and invite them to the show. I don't want to make friends. Oh, I, I don't mind making friends. It's just we have so Dealing many with people. All right, old man. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, you know, we make friends whenever we do the crazy things, like go to the bar in our armor. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's how you make friends. People come up to you, that's so cool. Oh, what's that made of? Uh, or you're at a convention and get completely ignored. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like you're just another person at a con. Yeah. That's... You know that's kind of the beauty of, of doing the the five hundred first as a, a, a costuming uh, hobby. There's lots of costumes that you could wear, and if you wore them into a public place, people would just look at you like, "Why is that person here in that costume from whatever random thing?" But you know, for example, like if if we put on a couple of you know stormtrooper outfits and went down to McGuire's. Nobody would bat an eye. Probably people not. Would, people would be talking about, oh, it's cool, you know, buying us drinks and things like that. And it, it's just, you know, costuming with uh, with Star Wars is, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's 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 a different genre. A different thing. It know? is, yeah. It, it, I guess it, it's, it's the superior costuming. Star Wars costuming is the best costume. Oh, boy, Any here come the Halo costume? fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> Lars are better because we don't have regulations and yes I, I appreciate that but we, we like what we like well and you go to a convention and there's only one guy there you know in his halo costume no, hanging you go- around all of us in our stormtrooper costumes because nobody wants to mess with the guy in the halo co- nobody cares about the guy in the halo costume <laughs> great now we're getting targeted by the 405th <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys we're part of that too yeah we like it but yeah I, you know. it hadn't been around as long so and it's not always as recognizable yeah yeah but Some then of again the, how many times do well, high pilots need to be called darth vader yeah and Some how many of the times really are, is boba fett being called the mandalorian the yeah or people that see the mandalorian and call him boba fett i'll take that <laughs> Which, really, fun fact, Mandalorian really should have just been Boba Fett's show. I mean, really, isn't that who we wanted to see as Boba Fett? Like, I mean, mean, cold, callous. But, but we, only got, to, we, we got. only got to see Boba Fett himself for a couple of episodes. Really, it's not even the Mandalorian show. It's like the It's the baby, Grogu show. Yeah, yeah, it's the Baby Grogu show. Yeah, the Baby Yoda show. Yeah. He's not Baby Yoda. He's Baby Yoda. He's Baby Yoda. He, yes. He's Baby Yoda. He's so cute. He is adorable. I have one of the little remote controlled, you know, desktop versions that like wobbles as it rolls and, and lifts its arm and does the little force thing. I right on my desk at the house. Yeah. Absolutely adorable. I love it. But yeah, he's he's baby Yoda. Yeah. <clears throat> they kill him in this week's episode, by the way. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? 
the oh fan out curling. I think it would break the internet oh, God. at this point. It, yeah. They murdered Baby Yoda. People, if they if they killed Grogu, like I I legitimately think that some hardcore fans would probably be stalking Kathleen Kennedy's house to try and assassinate her. I mean, I'm not against that without it, but I'm not saying go stalk yeah. Kathleen Kennedy's house and try to assassinate her. No, I'm but do try saying. to get her fired. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there goes our sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, out of the politics of things, the Star Wars <laughs> politics, though. That's right. That's right. So actually, we had a debate once about intergalactic copyright law. Yes, yes, intergalactic, uh, intergalactic trade law. Yes, and uh, <clears throat> because even in the Star Wars universe, moving goods across such vast distances would be at times cost prohibitive. It would be so much easier for them to basically do what we see nowadays with three D files, where they license out. Okay you have basically what amounts to like a mil spec production and as long as your your version of that thing meets the requirements it uses our files and is made out of the right materials sure you've got a planet whatever you know right. out so the basic of it is let's say let's just use this as an example i'm out on i was about to say clendathu but wrong universe, wrong universe. Uh, Klandathu. Okay, I'm on Tatooine, LB426. and and I'm <laughs> I'm on Tatooine, and I've designed this. And James is over on Mon Cal, and he designed basically the same thing. So when we go in to put in our imperial patent on it, who would actually get production rights at that point? Yeah. Like, how does that really work, or do they just not care? Yeah, you know, this. Yeah, just, do, do they just galaxy's not too care. big. We just don't care. Yeah, and that was the debate: was you know, is it where the the Star Wars universe is just so massive that nobody you know it'd just be IDGAF everywhere they went, or would there be some sort of a licensing authority? And you know, my my argument on it was, given the way the Empire operates, they would it would be very tightly controlled, and they would be taxing it very heavily well knowing the empire they'd probably just come in take over your entire planet and then enslave you into you know production at that point and screw your copyright that's actually probably the ultimate answer right there i mean some of yeah it. Well, for the most part you got something during, we like we're taking over your but planet. during the the debate you know or the, the discussion specifically we were talking about the blast tech e11 right that was right the empire uses the blast tech e11 they buy it from blast tech but does blast tech manufacture every E11 or are they licensed to different producers around the galaxy who then produce regionally within the galaxy for the imperial needs in that area of space sure we may never know and and yeah. in that instance you know it would do, for example if blast tech is producing for this particular region of space but the empire needs blasters in this area when that company starts producing those blasters for the Imperium, are they paying a, a, a royalty to Blast Tech for exactly. every blaster that's manufactured? This is really where I think the Empire just comes in and takes over the entire planet and puts them into slavery. And they but but they didn't. The they were still the Blast Tech E11. They were well, still produced by Blast Tech. We, we had uh, produced by Blast Tech. I'm trying to remember some of the names of the other blaster manufacturers right now. Well, it's not even just blasters. It's it's everything. You know, even down to like X wings and things like yeah, that. I, it's. Uh, well, there's your last Jedi moment. Um, it's two battles or whatever. Good guys, bad guys. It's all your point of view. Yeah. Because you had yeah. QAT drive yards, CNR fleet systems, uh, plenty of other manufacturers of spacecraft. Yeah. And it really boils down to the military industrial complex. Yep. And and how much did that bleed over into the civilian world outside of the, the governmental body of the Imperium? Just whoever's working at the fair prize. Yeah. That's so. what that really boils down to. So intergalactic copyright law. There's got to be like a bith lawyer or somebody out there that can explain i was just imagining us. some random lawyer <laughs> some random like, alien pop in no, no no i mean like real world some <laughs> random lawyer who happens to be a star wars fan who's watching this podcast <laughs> and he's like furiously typing away at his keyboard you know well i'll uh, show these guys he's gonna tell us how copyright law works and like what would be the natural extension given a galaxy-wide government body 
and the, the logistics of transporting goods from point A to point B and yeah, it's gonna get crazy. Yeah. Somebody out there is they're gonna we're gonna have like a six page long treatise on what would be, you know, the most effective way to run intergalactic trade law within the, the and, empire. And, and you know my reply to him? <clears throat> K. No, I think that'd be yeah, awesome. Just, just K. If you have a six page treatise, <laughs> yeah. send it to us. I would love to read it. I think that would be awesome. Uh, we want a full diatribe from uh, real-world legal people on intergalactic copyright law and the way it should work. Ain't nobody ever going to do You're this. still being tongue-in-cheek. I still I'm... think it's awesome. I, I love... When the day we had that, we spent like three hours talking about it because I would not let it go. I, it was such a fascinating conversation. It was like, how would that work? That's so awesome to think about. Well, we're just getting back to Phantom Menace now, the politic movie. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We, we, we wanted to watch two hours of politics. We got oh, here's, two, a, here's a space two wizard. Hours of the Senate. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, C-SPAN Star Wars edition. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, as much as I joke, they were not as bad as the sequels. Oh, <sighs> <laughs> uh, we're not even going to talk about that. We're uh, going to wrap up today's you know, episode. This yeah. is We're, no, that, we're not even going to get into we're, that. We're going to have a complete and total episode where we just bash the sequels. This is all we talk about. Let's just... Get it off our chests. And we will Everything lose. wrong with it. Everything to make it right. And we will Kathleen lose. Kathleen Kennedy getting fired. <clears throat> and we'll lose two out of our three followers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. Y'all like the sequel trilogy. It's, well. They'll be like, oh, you guys liking. and your toxic fandom. Yeah, guys. Thank y'all for joining us today. It's been a wonderful discussion. Um, again, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Visit us at 850armorworks.com. Be sure to play Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, get all no, of your don't, don't your play Raid. Yeah, yeah, get all of your grammar stuff from Grammarly and um, always like hashtag not sponsored yet. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored yet. <clears throat> but if you are interested in sponsoring, you know, we could make longer segments, more segments, uh, more shows, other shows. We could do anything. Uh, and if you have questions, uh, any topics, you want to come on the show, then send us an email, send us a private message, something of that nature, and uh, we'll, we'll get you on uh, very soon. Where we can. I mean, we've got so many people just beating down the door. To Everyone. Come be, they're like outside yes, right now, the, lined a line, up. A line, line outside, outside. Down the block. What we're going to have to do yeah. like mass executions <laughs> just because we don't have time for them all. Sorry. We have a ditch out back to bear. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all. Bye.